welcome back to another section of uh, men's reflection. I'm your host, Terry Njiru. I'm happy that we are having an opportunity to do this together. In this show, as we said earlier, we have said it again and again. This is a place whereby we allow our men to express themselves. This is a place whereby we highlight the various issues that are affecting the boy child as they are growing up. And this is a place whereby you and I have an opportunity to learn and so that it can be easy for us to relate with the male figures around us, be it Minani Kwako or who it is. This the, the, the main basic intention of this show is to help us to understand men and how they navigate their world. So welcome again in another sec segment. I hope you've been doing well. Again, we want to take this opportunity to invite you to visit Nocturne Hotel Embo. They have given us an amazing, amazing opportunity to be able to do this together. We cannot be able to do this or to continue without thanking them and to let you know of the facilities that they have. They have conference facilities that are very well equipped. They have accommodation. There is an amazing restaurant down here. And above all, they have a very ample parking. Don't uh, fail or even miss to visit uh, Nocras Hotel. They are now in Embo. I know they are in Moranga and other places. You can also pass by. It's just along Meru Embo Highway. So today we are blessed to have an amazing guest on board. He is the director Chuka University Embo Campus and it is none other but Dr. Moses Kaduri Njeru. He is going to be with us today. Thank you so much sir for making time. Thank you. Welcome so much to the show. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. Nice to see you, by the way. I had not seen you from the time the year started. <laughs> it's a good opportunity. We are happy to have you on board. And Thank our you. viewers, as you know, we have something packed up for you today. We would want our guests to engage us on what is the role of the high, higher, the, the current education system when it comes to bringing up responsible, holistic uh, men in the generation that we are in. And we want to believe that this person here who deals with our young men in campus about their socialization, about their talent, and they are molding them to what system do they have laid in place so that they can mold a well-equipped man even as they leave campus to the job market. So, Mr. Director, Karibu sana in men's reflection. Thank you. I don't want to be the one that has introduced you. Please, it's good you say hi to our viewers and you can also introduce yourself. Hi, viewers. Happy New Year. It's a great 2024. Welcome to the show. Like you've been told, my name is Dr. Moses Kaduri Jero, a lecturer and director of Chuka University of Campus, where we are dealing with young men. As we have said, we are reflecting on mothers, men, because those are the people who are supposed to give direction in the society. And uh, when you look at our Christian values, you know, it is men who had a uh, conversation with God, and therefore they should be able to carry that responsibility all through. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, You're Terry. You're most welcome. We yeah. are happy to have you on board. And mm. we have a lot of questions because you need to make us understand what is it that you're doing as a campus so that by the time a man transitions from the adolescent age, that is the, pri the, the high school age, they come to campus, there is nobody to show them where to start and all that. Then they are there for four years. Then they break into the world. There are a lot of issues that are happening. And we would want to know what are the measures or do you think the current education system, because you've been there for a while, it is equipping a man or the young man enough to be able to handle whatever it is that is out there? That's a very good question. <clears throat> Understanding where... Uh, university education is placed in our yeah. system. Yeah. We receive uh, uh, students who have been through primary education and secondary education. Yeah. So from uh, the student transitioning from uh, Form 4, they are already entering into tertiary institutions. Yeah. So yeah. we are really sure by the time a person is, our a candidate is sitting for Form 4, mm -hmm. they are over, most of them are approaching 18 years. Yeah. So basically we deal with more of uh, adult student or more be say like uh, by Kenyan standards yeah. because they yeah, are they are approaching 18, 18 years, years yeah. 18 years and above so basically we have we receive a relatively uh, mature uh, student uh -huh. and uh, 
these are the students who are either you know in a university you can um you can have students starting at certificate diploma mm -hmm. bachelor's and on one degrees so it means and the minimum requirement is form four so you're very sure that some that person is of uh, adult age according to the yeah. kenyan standards so those who get to uh, apply because they're those who apply for certificate because of their qualification yeah. then there are those who will yeah. get diploma they also will be applying yeah. but we have the bachelor student who are always placed by the government yeah. So, and the, the programs at the in the university, mm -hmm. they are determined by what you call the cluster point. Every area that you are training, because this is not already, this is not like a form four. We're already getting into a career preparation. Mm -hmm. So there is what is required, the, the cluster subjects that are required to prepare one into a given career. If it is engineering, they have their own requirement. Mm -hmm. And it will be different for health sciences, medicine and health sciences. It's going to be different from what you call the natural sciences, the hand sciences, or even the art sciences, all the social sciences and humanities. So every program will have its own specific requirement. So as they, the students are placed, in as much as they apply, you need to have met the requirement. Okay, I so cannot see they care. Mm -hmm. understand there is a requirement. The requirements, yes. There is the application. The application. Where do you place the passion? Because what because is supposed to believe mm -hmm. The application comes with the passion, not the placement. The placement is purely on the requirement. Well, the qualification. Mm -hmm. So there are two things here. Yeah. One is that you may have passion. So like uh, you, 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 you feel that I want to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. Doctors required to be, for you to be trained in, uh, in health sciences. Most of the times they'll say they need a person to have passed in English. Mm -hmm. Maybe a language, language. mathematics. Science. Maybe, yes, uh, they have be very specific. They'll say chemistry and uh, biology. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, even if you had passion and you didn't do biology in high school, that it's passion is just, 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 it's gone. Mm -hmm. You go to the nearest, maybe the nearest it's course that you can, be, yes. And probably, you know, you're not, and it's not going to be very easy because mm -hmm. all the health sciences, medicine and health related sciences, they'll require those subject combination. Mm -hmm. But what will be different is the cutoff point, the point required for each. Mm -hmm. You would almost see like um, the medicine and the surgery, they'll require almost like one to have almost straight A's. Mm -hmm. So those who are not qualified, then there are people will just then go to the nursing and these other areas. So you find some of these areas are competitive based on the, the capacity in each of the universities. Mm -hmm. So they'll take the best in that area. Mm -hmm. So you may have passion, but you're not qualified, then you go to the next one. If it's engineering, they'll be very particular. They say, I want somebody who has done very well in mathematics, physics, mm -hmm. chemistry, and maybe geography or other language. You see, even if you had passion to become an engineer, Education and if you have done physics, mm -hmm. you are out. Mm -hmm. So those are the things, those are gymnastics. What is the next other thing that you can do other than the engineering now that you need to? And this is where now every university must have an office called uh, Office of Career Guidance, so that when the students come in, they're guided on these things. And even, no, even before they come to the university, even at high school, mm -hmm. they are allowed to visit the career services mm -hmm. where they'll be guided on what each of these requirements are. And secondly, CUSIPS has done very well. The Kenya University Central, uh, Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service is one of the places all the students only form for in uh, tertiary institutions. They'll always produce that document on the requirement for each of the programs. So it's up to the student now to choose which university do I want to go to based we on have, these things. Uh, Director, we have found ourselves with cases. I mm -hmm. want to believe I even saw a case of a student who knew very well this is the max I should have attained in this particular KCP, this was my target, and I know if I didn't get this, something was wrong. I think I, I saw something like that in the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and I'm looking at a situation whereby my hope throughout my life, I wanted to do this. All of a sudden, the, the, the points were not able to help me attain or get to the course that I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. We have young men that are not able to take that rejection because as young as they are, they don't want to have a plan B or they don't have an alternative or a place in them to make them uh, have a plan of, I can do this. And so the way they take it, it becomes so so, so disturbing to them that it can even affect them. Some even land themselves into depression and all that. And some are even discouraged to even pursue anything else apart from whatever they wanted. But they slipped with some very few points. So no. what happens mm -hmm. to such students? Uh, 
I believe this is an issue of uh, passion and passive qualification. This is what I say about passion. You may be passionate about engineering. Mm -hmm. And I say some of these courses are competitive versus the qualification. Mm -hmm. Because this is a government program. Mm -hmm. Universities usually say, I have this number of slots for engineering. And another one you say, and this. So the best student, because they are competitive things, it's very competitive. It's out. Anybody wanted to be an engineer, you apply. So you'll find that uh, if, say, for example, University X, University B, they offer engineering, or they offer, let's say, like even uh, training for yeah. teachers. Now, it's up now to the demand. Those who are applying, they say, I would want to go to, say, like, I want to go to Chuka University. Mm -hmm. You find some of our programs are very competitive. Say they want to come to Chuka University to do, uh, maybe uh, to be trained as a teacher of science. Mm -hmm. There's a time that we had the highest cutoff point. Wow. Because a lot of students want to come there. There is also another university X where they are offering the same program, but we have less students interested in that program. So what do you do? Then you have to raise the cutoff points so that you only retain the best student and the, the capacity that you're given. Yeah. So that is what can happen. Now, with the issue of the qualification and the passion, yeah. if you can meet the qualification at the bachelor's level and you feel that, because the way I feel what should matter is the passion for a program. And that's why there is... A bachelor's and then there's a diploma you may find out diploma at least you'll qualify if you feel that is what you want to if you say i want to become an engineer and i didn't get qualified because it was very competitive i can start at a lower level most of all these engineering programs they have their equivalent diploma programs once you clear with the diploma then you can go up once and this is where we've seen even um, a lot of what you could get that uh, choice of uh, programs most of the people imagine that uh, engineering is for the boys yeah, and then these are the yeah. sort of subjects for yeah. girls. See, you see, like now you might one may say, I'm seeing a lot of girls in engineering. So if you're a boy, you may feel, or a man, you may feel ah, approaching, maybe even uh, these girls in engineering, this could be a threat. Because these, these are hard people. You know, this is the perception that we have, some yes. careers. And you need to talk about nursing. You see, nursing looks more of a... Uh, uh, you see, there's a, a, a very, you know, some uh, nurturing skills. This is mainly for ladies. Yeah. You know, these are the perceptions around gender. Yeah. These are the social expectations that will shape us. Mm -hmm. Now, when the student reports the university, mm -hmm. all programs are structured in such a way that a student can be able to survive within the university. Mm -hmm. Even if they're doing engineering, you find that they also they are also taken through other social courses where they are able to survive you because uh, they, you find everybody getting university depending on the university you may find even if they are doing these some courses even if they are doing medicine you find them that they have to do what you call university common courses yeah, yeah. the things like communication yeah. that one everybody has to do yeah. because we know very well this person is going to deal with people out there you need to know how to communicate in writing in talking and those are things that's why you have to impart them with these writing skills that is universal we have courses like uh, HIV AIDS, which students must understand. We are living in the society that we are in. You find even we have courses like philosophy and society. Because usually when you say that, uh, you know, I don't know whether you've been, where people say, you know, you're arguing like a person who has not been to school. But you need, <laughs> even the science yeah. of forming argument, something yeah. that needs to be taught. Mm -hmm. So that that thinking must be must be impacted on this student. That's why they have to do these common courses. And then you find uh, all these are things dealing with the society so that you know how to do with each other. So they, the universities are equipping students with these basic skills early enough so that the student can be able to survive. Knowing very well now, this is not, we are, we are not going to have uh, uh, morning assemblies like they were used to in secondary school. Yeah. We are not going to call yeah. parents meeting. We are not going to call uh, lunchtime. We don't have a uh, 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 you don't have a bell where you expect now if somebody is going to ring a bell. Mm -hmm. So we expect them also to come with some levels of responsibility. Okay. The system they are in, they are set in such a way that you'll be able to fit in and it's expected. These are person of a certain intellectual level that I know for yeah. sure they should be able to follow. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to wake you up, but they know what is ahead of you will make you mm -hmm. get up. So before we get to the topic of once they get into campus, how mm -hmm. they adapt to it and how they survive in it that is the part of socialization in a boy in a let's call them a young the young adult man mm -hmm. eh? i want you to talk to a parent right now that has a certain expectation we know that some of them just finished uh, for for the other day mm -hmm. so there's a parent that is so much hard on a certain boy that i wanted you to do this particular course but that is the parent wish 
but mm. a young man here wants to pursue something different and they can even quarrel and have chaos in the family simply because the boy doesn't want to do what the parent has chosen for them or what they expected them to become and you'd even find out that sometimes there are young men that will leave their homes mm -hmm. and will be like i just can't this environment is too much and this expectation that you people have i'm trying to navigate myself to accept that i could not get to the point that are required for this i'm trying to figure out something so i want you to talk to a parent that is seeing this that is in such kind of a situation and is even wondering and imposing and some are even willing to go an extra mile of getting them that position for that particular call and you also talk to a young man that did not attain whatever they wanted and i want you to show them or to talk to them and tell them all is not lost you can also become you can start as you have said from a lower level and gradually end up to bachelor to masters on your area of passion if at all that is still what you want to pursue it's time men individuate our young man individuate from a young age not because a certain squad of high school guys this is what we wanted to become we have our boys suffering from that this is what we wanted to pursue this campus is everything but what is the place of an individual and how do they navigate individually in terms of decision making in terms of this is the path i want to take in terms of even their spirituality and everything because you find out for you to be able to dr be dragged to drugs it's like a group you don't do it alone for you to be able to be dragged to lgbtq let us stop the truth these are things that are affecting our children it is start with a certain a discussion somewhere so kindly how do you help them what would you tell the parent what would you tell them that young man that's uh terry that's a uh, quite a complex uh thing yeah because uh these are called uh, i would say their, their expectations yeah. and uh, when a child is born if you address the socialization process when a child is born mm. is either born male or female, female yeah. and it's up to the society to shape the male to become a boy and later a man yeah. and that's what you call the socialization process it's it's up to the society to shape this uh, female yeah. into a girl and finally into a woman and uh, what we say when you talk about gender and uh, and the society these are more of expectations so the society will tell you this is what we expect of a boy this is what we expect of a girl part of these are that because of the perception that we have about what we would expect men many have been these uh, kind of big jobs you know a man you are the provider if you have the provider you have to get in the jobs that can going to provide and of course the society has accepted that uh, properly you, you're not going to forgive a man who is being provided for by the woman even if they're in love and the society of course you people and your species are saying well you only want Seems when like you I'm find on, I'm the, um, I'm on yes the because you say so you've much. already had when you discuss among them you say what are your expectations of a girl walk into the street what do you expect of a man ah, a born provider and this so this, yeah well the born is once they are the same pesha kwanza hiyo biashara na nyingine tutafuata nao baadaye those are the issues and these are things getting to the start therefore wanasema hmm. pesa suda tutavumilia yes now you see if you, this is what is hard by the next boy there then you know before i say i want to become a man i've already heard what the society expects yeah. and of the cause of women what they expect of me i must get money and therefore if i cannot get money in the work that i'm doing then that's the person who can fall into the nearest anything that will give them money including all those who are weird ways because i think that's right. what how they start to expect this man to do yeah. so even parents they know there are those careers there are those careers that would be very sure that once my child goes once my son goes through this course then they are sure that Lisa will love money and that we have said with careers and with jobs and the frustrations and the education i've talked about two main things i'm talking about qualification versus passion and i would say passion overrides qualification okay. It will be very good if you are able to combine qualification and passion. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, in terms of choice of the uh, programs which will lead to your career, yeah. you need to understand what does this, you, and you, as a parent, you are the first, you're the first teacher of your children. Yes, so your you should be able to say, according to what I have seen my son, I believe this somebody who can, he looks more of, uh, you know, it's one person who is doing repairs around here. This one can be an engineer, yes, this is okay. 
Especially if you give them a, a laptop, they are able to dismantle. You know, that's a characteristic of boys. If you expose girls to the same thing, they'll also do the same thing. It's only that at times we set these standards and say, now, we have a boy there, you have a girl here. You'll give a girl that toddler, and maybe a toy, yeah. a, a toddler, it's easy to move, but we're going to do it. And then the, the dolly, and then the boy will give him a toy. Within minutes, it's just, yes, it's mantled. You want to discover. You're already ensuring some uh, standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
where you you may you are, may have passed very well, but your ability is not to that program. So you may get the first day you find yourself within the first semester you get frustrated because you know, you're not keeping up with the pace of the rest of the students. Remember, we are gifted differently. Do you may find that you are the last, yet you are the best in that school according to the result that you are given. So you get forced placement in a program. So that's where our frustration sets in. Because you are there, and the only thing you can do is that you say, ah, I mean, this is not the best program, then you are engaged in this activity and that activity. Actually, we have parents that even go out of their way mm -hmm. to ensure they get, uh, what do I call them? They are students, they are children in high school. The exam itself, thinking they are helping. Because <sighs> they want them to go to Nairobi University, let me call them or your Kenyatta University, you know it happens. Well, I, so I what believe... happens? Because now that seems you're telling me there are people that will get frustrated after they are yes. placed in certain courses, and within the first semester, I cannot keep up with the pace. And let me you tell can't. you, I even don't have a home to go back to because, because the, the my... expectations are yes, very high, the and they know. And that's why we do. should. It is parents who should be the first in the first line, the front line of ensuring we have exam integrity. No parent should be involved in aiding or assisting their children to pass. Let the, student, let the exam, if it is well set, and I believe the national exams are well set, mm -hmm. you'll be able to gauge your student ability academically. Mm -hmm. So that you'll be able to say now, if they are placed in this program, they can match up. That's why I say some of the programs can be quite demanding, yeah. and therefore we academically, and therefore your ability must ma match what these students are required. So I said there are a lot of frustrations where they come in if you cannot measure up to those expectations. Number two, you see there is the issue when you go to a university. Mm -hmm. We don't have, like I said, we don't have uh, where you're saying a common meal, so you go for lunch this way. You just look at your schedule. There could be lunch time, and therefore you need to be a good planner. If you don't know how to plan, then you might be on the losing track. And that's yeah. why I say a number of people get lost. You know you have the freedom. I'm not going. Nobody's going to wake you up. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to tell no, you go to class. Seven. Yes, and so you decide. No, you have a class at seven. Do I go to class? Do I sleep? And you know, I'm like I've said, attendance of classes is a must. Yeah, it's a must. Yeah. You see, when you lose concept, when you miss a class, mm -hmm. you're missing an above concept. Even if you want to copy notes, you may not get what the lecture. They know there is also, yeah. like I said. There is the spirit of a course, and uh, there is what is in that course. You know, some of these things, you get them very well if you in class. Mm -hmm. If I emphasize a point, that is, you're likely to remember that more than what you may copy from the next person. Yeah, so these are the things, and at times you may find, if you're not firm as a, as a student, you get, you know, you can easily get lost. Yeah. Because I think they won't show up, ah, now here I have the freedom, I can do what I want. That those will say, I'm not going to attend classes. You know, classes are for the cowards and for the girls. Let them go. I'll copy, not later. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where some of these young men get lost. Mm -hmm. In a way to show, uh, sometimes defiance, I, there's a bit of freedom. Because now, comparing high school and yeah. university, now these are transition. Yeah, so they feel now from yeah. home and here, these are different world altogether. If you don't have the right principles and values, then you're likely to get lost because nobody's going to ask you. Lecturer is not going to come to your room and uh, we wake up. It's not a dormitory. They don't come to the hostels to wake you up. So you must be responsible enough and this is what you need to learn. And you must be a good planner because you know very well this is what you need to do within this period of time. As well, when they come freshly, you know, they'll find there's a lot of freedom. One, there's a freedom of everything, everything, everything. everything. But of course now it is freedom with everything, but uh, you have to do it responsibly. There is consequence. There's yeah, there of is course. Consequences, consequences are there. You miss classes, I know you miss classes, you know, of course there'll be a cut. Of course, no, the systems have really upgraded. They have really upgraded. It's not you nobody's going to sign for you. If I find, if I fade, I mean comfortably sign for me. That was then. We have upgraded. We are now ahead of the system, you know. It's a nice thing. These are things where you both check. So if you sign and today I decide I'm going to call the register. Yes. What will happen? And I can be able, of course, you sign and I carry the carry the register attendance. Today attendance. This is something you take because the requirements for every program are, is that you must attend at least eighty percent of the classes for you to be attending to to do exams. So you must meet the requirement of attending classes. It's not about that you will pass or 
first of all, for you to sit for that end of semester exams, you must have attended 80%. And that's by provision, the requirement. You know, even the university education is regulated yeah. by what you call the Commission for University Education. There are standards that I have given. Okay. For you to allow the student to sit for this exam, whether they have gotten everything in cut, they must have attended 80% of the courses. Okay. So that comes with the responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to learn to do this. And you must be able to plan very well as a student. A timetable very well, because then you get to know, tomorrow I have a class at 7. It means then I wake up early, get to class, and then come back and do these things. Then the issue of library, these are things that a student must do. So a good person, a person who has um, integrity, will, because you have to learn. Yeah. You could be miles and miles away from your parents, but it's you should know I came here to learn and I need also to grow. And also we say, for sure, within the four period of time, they also socializing. They also get yeah. to know people from different places of this country, different parts of the world. So they also grow, grow socially. They'll be able to understand, ah, this is how Kushites are. This is how Bantus are. This is how Nilots are. I mean, some of these things now, this is why you're able to demystify some of these uh, um, myths that we have, that you, have you know, some of these, uh, some of these uh, stereotypes. These yeah. are things that we get to learn. And this is where you even find, oh, you mean as you're growing, you find, uh, uh, you find a friend. You may get a girlfriend and say, I believe this one looks like a person that I can, yeah. can settle with. Yeah. So it's allowed. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that they take some of this freedom too much, too much. Mm -hmm. And of course, they, these other girls come with their own demands. I say, oh, well, yeah. demand, demand. demands, yeah, all over. So I see the boy child is also so much at the, say somebody said that a siege. And a siege. <laughs> and a siege. One time as they would say it. So the demands me? are placed there. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, you, you need to, Get, yeah, we don't have uniforms, so you need to also dress up like uh, a student. Do you play, why would I place a demand on you? We are both students. We came here to learn. What point are you trying to prove that you're willing to even because you find out that uh, some young men that are really involved in crime and other few things that really can be destroying in terms of character and their future, they were maybe trying to please someone at the end of the day. What would make them go to that extra extent? Or I want to please someone. Why? Of course, yes. like I said, the, the boy child is under siege from the, the girl child. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, you know, we are told that the girls are tender. They need to be taken care of. We have already told everybody around here is saying, you need to man up. You need to be responsible. You need to have to provide. And they'll say, you, if you cannot provide, you just i have listened to a number of social uh, forum where people say, no, what, what do girls I expect? Somebody who can provide financially stable, you know, at this least. And some of them are saying this while they are still at the universities and colleges. I want a financially stable man. I say, like, ah, financially stable. When you look at it, surely, how can a, a 29 to that surely be financially stable? They came the other day and then you expect them financially stable. So, the, and of course, some of them feel the pressure and they want to, to respond and they want to please this one. Because if you say, well, I cannot pretend that they cannot get married. They can. They, some of them got their spouses while they are still there at the campus. Some even so, to an extent of getting married when they are still students. They is a kid. Not even married. They even they, we have a lot of some of them. Some of the places we have a lot of uh, what you call uh, informal marriages in uh, no, in campuses and right? colleges. They won a So you got married. Not even one. I think they were two. A mm. girl comes home. She has a kid. Can I ask? I yeah, complete. You have a baby. Yeah, congratulations. So you got married? Uh, we are not married. Then it's, uh, you know, I ask myself a question. So what is this? The fact remains, you're living in a house with a man. You're mm -hmm. doing all the house chores. You're practically the wife. So what is it that you call a marriage? Is it the one because the marriage has been paid? Or what is it that students call a marriage? Even though they can't mm -hmm. cohabit together? Because honestly, at the end of the day... Cohabiting. They are just sharing. You know, they, are, they, they, they the say... Expenses? No, they, they say, of, of course, it's about matching and uh, trying to survive with the uh, legal resources. See, like, if you match, then you don't have yes, to, yes. yes, the expenses, you share the expenses. And this is a, a very convenient arrangement where you say, now, you see, we can agree that now you take this and we share. Go to Kuna Pika in the Taunga. Uta Kuna Nyo Shia Vyombo na Sisa Nyo Shia Ntafutaunga? Yes. Yeah. So of course from home. Kwa hindi kutafuta sini kutunga kwa hindi kuna mtu anatafuta mingini. So we share, we share. Sometimes there are those who will say, you know, we were supposed to give 50-50. Yeah. 
those things are real. And we invite parents. You know, I've always wondered, you know, these are people like those who are joining university this year, they were in Form 4 last year, sure. Yeah. Last year you were coming even to follow up at the school where they were and how they were doing. How do they just become adults overnight and then within one year you're saying, ah, they cannot take. I do know one thing I want to, the moment students realize the parents have no touch, they'll do what they want. Those will be shocked that they feel they, or they think their students are in, in fourth year or that year, yet those students are not even continuing their school. That if they leave, healthy. that's Some where we need to have. That a parent can, a student just, when a, when a semester is done, they go home just like any other person. Yeah. The, if you can the opening, they have opened the school. But truth be told, this person has like one year, they have not stepped into class. Actually, they even can't remember. So There, there are a lot of challenges, and this is where I say, yeah. probably the ignorance of the public and the parents. Because every parent has a right to check their student progress. Their results, you can walk to any facet today yeah, where your student is registered. You only want to say, I'm the parent of this. And these details are there in the system. You have to confirm whether you parent. And like, you can be given the result of your of your son, of your daughter, yeah. within that time that you can even get in particular. So you'll be told these are how they are performing. And no parent should say, and no student should be able to, to, to say that, uh, no, we, we can't get our results. After every semester, results are always availed. They, you can be able to tell the student passed or failed. But the results are released at the end of every academic year. You've done two semesters, then you expect the results. Don't say, you know, see Kubali. Well, you're told that, you see, the results are not out, you, you know, 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 the Senate, of course. So it's up to the parents who put the demand. I like the parents who will call directly and say, I have this student. All you need to have, get to know the student registration number and name. Just get to know their program. So it you takes can. us back to intentional parenting, yes, even in campus. You must, you must so do a follow-up. So the follow moment up. our boys get into campus, it's not the high time to say, ah, you have matured up. All I need to know mm. is to know how much you need for the hostel and I pay for it. I'm supposed as a parent to go mm. back and figure out how are you living? How intentional am I when it comes to pursuing you as my son? Because I want you to become this particular type. That, that's very important because it's not <clears throat> it's a responsible following because yeah. I'm not saying you come and spy. Yeah. Find out who, which girl, which girl are they studying? Yeah. No, I'm saying you just do your bit. You know your student, your your son's, your daughter's name, then you add the registration number. What the you know student fact or whichever inquiries. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to get to know the, how my student, my son, my daughter is performing. Mm -hmm. The moment they get to know that you are doing a follow up on them, mm -hmm. they'll be more serious. Other than waiting so, until they graduate, you know the only question when are you graduating after I pay fees? You once you pay fees, uh -uh. they'll always be interacting with you on mobile pesa. And so all these, uh, you know, and you know, these are mixed. And as we, the student come, it's also important to keep on talking to your sons and daughters, find out how they are living. Mm -hmm. When they tell you, see, my roommate is, uh, has a system, has a TV, now they want to measure up to them, you'll have a lot of pressure. These are things that some of things you need also to guide your children. Most mm -hmm. of them are very responsible. You find most of them are very responsible, you can understand. But of course, Students will lose behind of the parents and they try to create ways of getting money. Yeah. You know, they'll say, in the student, the easiest way is uh, to say, We have a project that is coming up and we have been asked to pay 10,000 shillings. I've had those stories. And we have an yeah, academic trip, happy. which is compulsory. If I don't go, I'll fail. Then, then we have uh, 8,000 shillings. Money that is not Others will be told. They have to do a lot of things. Of course, because some, some of these parents don't follow up and say, ah, we even be, we need uh, notes. Right? Others will be saying even have we need to even uh, photocopy COVID. I don't know. They also said money to photocopy COVID. anything. <laughs> They'll be saying things, and so as parents, you 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 are mute of this money. But anyway, it's uh, there are student creative ways of surviving. So what is required of this student is that um, they need to really be responsible yeah. and learn and understand the way I'm coming from because it's, you cannot come and fit. No, at least in high school, it's good where we have a uniform and everything mm -hmm. is prepared centrally. Mm -hmm. At the university, you know, they are allowed to, there are those who come in suits, there are those who come in their ragged. Yeah. You know, there is that freedom. Okay. So you are able to tell this one comes from this certain kind, kind of, of background. Of background. So if you feel that now you want to measure up and look like them, then it means where do you get to those money? You can be able to 
Yes. If it's not the parents' money, you're willing to indulge yourself in other things. Yes, for that you can measure up to this uh, social pressure. So, mm-hmm. so and that peer pressure is what can lead uh, some of the students to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, response to problems. our parents that have uh, boys and maybe girls that are joining campuses, uh, from the director, he's telling us that uh, that is not the time to put your uh, what do I say? To put your guts down and say, ah, they are mature, they are mature. Now no. they can handle themselves. It's your responsibility to be able to go back and uh, make sure you follow up, and so that you can keep them up. Uh, so that usikuja kujua after two years, actually they are not graduating. They are not you are given all kind of excuses. They didn't as to say. Why they are not they say even uh, the lecturer was transferred. What the hell about the transfer of a lecturer? And girls will bring all kind of excuses. Yes, they were they told. I don't know. I was told that if I don't. But those are things you can arrest. And you know, I've always seen when the when the students are reporting, something that is always a scenario that always amuses me. When they are reporting, the law report, uh, you find that students have been brought by both parents. Moja kupande hii, mgina kupande hii, na guomrefu sana, inafika ukochini, na bibiria, na all those things. They look good. And before you get home, they have changed all these uh, things, these utter, and they are just into themselves. Do you think it's about freedom? Why would they go to that? That, 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 depends that depends on the parenting, I will say. Depends on the parenting. Because they are not supposed to change like that. Something. This is something, if you have the right values, there is the aspect of peer pressure. There is the aspect of also the parenting. But they have those intrinsic values that, you know, for sure, this one, I, whenever I, I leave this one, at least I know them to this extent. Yeah. So that's uh, it's quite a challenge, but uh, those who make it, and a number of them make it anyway. Mm-hmm. They learn a number of ways. These survive weeks. And you know, it's also good. Let's uh, go through challenges. They also think. Challenges are good because they make you think. Yeah. Because all these demands is not always good to provide everything mm-hmm. that the students ask for. Let them also think outside the box. So at the end of the day, at I end of the day. God that uh, there's a psychologist that was there, was, we were with, and he was telling, she was teaching us the different parenting styles, mm-hmm. and she was showing us how every parenting style affects the character of a child. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I think one thing I've grasped at is to make sure that the parents are intentional. It's time to be a parent until you can't be a parent. You know, mm-hmm. I think until our boys have proven to you that I'm a responsible person, oh, yes. don't make them mature up early. I think that mm-hmm. is what you're telling us. Yes, so you for sure. Campus, but at the end of the day, you're still using my money, young man. No, you're still no asking me for... You know, make them accountable. Credit itself. Yes, make so them. for that, you have to still be an authority and you can still be responsible. Mm. And I want to think that if at all our parents, we can come together and we be responsible, we be intentional. We have been told in this channel over and over again, it's about intentional parenting. It's about accessibility. It's about coming together and saying that I'm, I want to pay attention to what he has been doing. And you never know. Maybe by the time you are paying attention, you will have saved him from a whole lot of issues. Oh, yes. Because you realize that uh, the current men, they are not able even to take a defeat. People who just, I'm sorry to say this, someone can just lose a job, and that's the end. They are not able to bounce back. But again, I thank God because there are some people that come out of campus wealthy. They were mm. able to be industrious enough. Any opportunity they used we have nurtured the greatest leaders in campuses. Oh, yes, so I yes, think yes. also the education system at the moment is giving... It gives them more opportunity for that, all of them. As as uh, earlier as even you being... You know, even we allow that once you get into a program, you elect your own class rep. Whoever yeah, you represent yeah, yeah, that yeah. class. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of uh, social clubs where you feel, if you feel you want to exercise some leadership, they are all... Uh, faith-based yeah. cl- organizations. There are clubs based on mm-hmm. programs. So if it's about accessing uh, leadership, they be there. There is also the overall university leadership where you get the student the student unions. Yeah. They can get. So they have forums to express themselves, and you have to convince others why you think you can. You are the best. Are the best. And uh, some of these things, once you learn well, you find some of those people who are able to integrate well, who have, who have the right values. Yeah. Those students can be able to tell this one is going far. Some of the prominent fellows we have, leaders that we have, you yes, go back to the history, right. they were, you find that they were once, yeah. they were leaders. So uh, university plays a big role and uh, colleges, they play a big role in the character formation of a, of a person and uh, the student. Mm-hmm. You find some of the even the values that you have, they learn at that place. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a good place where we are able to even integrate some of the national values of inter- integration. Yeah. You learn them at that level because you're meeting people from different, back, different backgrounds. And when you share these experiences, you also 
you also learn. Yeah. You get to learn from other people. So I, I believe it is a good place where people learn and they form character and it plays a big role, uh, part in the formation of characters of our men. Mm. So those who go through it responsibly, they'll always be victorious. I would not expect, especially if a person has gone through university, they, they should be able to organize themselves. Sure. They should be able to organize themselves right from the where they stay, how they plan their hours, because it, it, it teaches them responsibility. Because like I said, they know. Choices will have consequences. You don't attend the classes, then you'll fail. If you fail, you'll be, it's continue. Yeah. Then with the other things will follow. So I know opportunities are there existing in tertiary institutions, and they can, they're good for mm-hmm. formation of men and uh, young men and women of this country. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, wow. Yes. That is nice. Uh, there is it. Uh, our viewers, you have heard it, that it is true. The current education system is giving the boy child an opportunity to become a wholesome man, an opportunity to choose what what path they want to take, an opportunity to be able to decide for themselves individually. Individuating is most important when it comes to campus life. And that we have been reminded from the director himself. Parents, don't say that my boy is in first year, second year, now they are grown. No. They still need you to parent them. And parenting is about uh, being concerned. Parenting is about being accessible. Parenting is about wanting to know what is it that they do with their lives. As he has said there before, I just say, when they look at police, I just say, Ma, you make them a friend and you show them that, hey, you can tell me uh, we were not given the results, all these and these happen, but you can make a phone call. It just, you know, it gives them a place of, uh, it gives them a sense of, oh, Mom, I can try to lie to mom or dad about this, but I know she or he can get information. A phone call away, whether we saw mom or we saw mom, it's about just being intentional because at the end of the day, we will be able to notice. You remember what we were told uh, some other day here that it's going back to the root. The moment you spend time with them, Wakikuja holiday, it's true you might want to get them in internship or attachment for whatever reason, but stay with them and get to understand them. That way you'll be able to understand whether whatever they are blunt, whatever kind of people they are interacting with in campus is affecting their life positively or negatively because you'll be able to, to, to sense the behavior change. So that is it for today. We want to appreciate the director, Chuka University, and uh, because of taking time for showing up for the show today, I'm sure that we are going to continue to interact. We appreciate so much our viewers for always being on board. I'm sure at the end of the at the end of this session and at the end of the day, what you and I want to see is whole a wholesome man that is responsible, someone that is able to take up the responsibility and even to be able to say that I have some bare minimums on my own. And so that we can be able to have a balanced society because that is what we are all looking at. So that is all for today. May God bless you. Thank you so much, Nocturne Hotel, for giving us an opportunity to use your facilities. We are so, so much humbled, and we pray that God will bless you. For you that is in Embu County, for you that is going to visit or you're going somewhere around Mount Kenya or wherever you are, you can visit Nocturne Hotel and be sure you'll get the best, best services that you could have wanted, and you will be blessed. So thank you so much. Until next time.